Is there a link between intelligence and the proclivity to the path of consciousness? Why is that path really taken by most Islam's biggest scholars? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think intelligence is... I think the term intelligence is in that statement is... Uh, it's immaterial to the discourse. I don't feel that it's... Um, it kind of um, is pro or against. Why did many scholars not seek the ultimate path of consciousness? I think, obviously, another thing is it's difficult to know what people ultimately did because you only know what they told you they did. <laughs> See, that's another important thing. Maybe many more people did much more than what they told you they did. Because it's it's true, people, you know, you don't want to share as well everything. And people fear ramifications, they fear reper repercussions, and especially in the past, you can imagine the lynch mob and um, and people, some people would still do stuff. Like, you take Ibn Hazm as an example, now, he's such a serious scholar, very uh, feisty and fiery and, um, you know, just argumentative and radical in, like, in his opinions. And um, this is why I've always found him very inspiring. And But then he writes this book all about the kind of psychology of love, which is full of just anecdotes of... I don't know, discussions on categories or chapters of love but with just stories. And and he's saying these are actual events that he's either witnessed or from, you know, somebody's told him that he's reliable. And he's writing this book after the age of 40. He says, I, I write this after the age of 40, so don't think I'm kind of some young kid that's carried away. And in it, he's kind of telling all these love stories and he's telling some of his own love stories, different women and how... It, it, certain obsessions and now in many ways that was a very daring feat of Ibn Hazm because you see these things could and they may have as well damaged him in as in may have caused extended some suffering onto him because people would utilize these to attack obviously with that particular book they didn't maybe because in that day and age this was a part of life that people maybe weren't that fussed about. The scholars didn't really use it against him. But they could have. They used other things against him, and they did have him attacked and his books burnt and all this kind of stuff. So one has to be weary that in the past, what does one say and what do they speak of? And this is why when I've been asked about, for example, do I think people in the past were exploring psychedelics? And I think many, maybe not most, but many people were exploring psychedelics because nature is not new to us. You know, we're not the first people to see mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms have been around a lot longer than us. So what why why would you think that people haven't been eating mushrooms like this this is like this is an example like why would you think that that see it's such a a dumb modern kind of like it's such a silly notion to assume that people before oh why would people have eaten food that just naturally grows in nature Duh. like well of course they would have so the question is well if that's the case why weren't they talking about it this is an you know amazing book I've got I've got it here somewhere I think I've put it back it's a it's a small book about study of uh, psychedelics and animals so animals that get kind of they take psychedelics and you can you can watch them and they do it in nature and they do it and it alters their state of consciousness so you'll get rabbits deers you'll get the chimpanzees you'll get different people and cows and and when they do it they, they kind of like you can tell they've gone and then they will do it again because they want that state of consciousness again. <laughs> so if animals were doing it, why would you think human beings weren't? But then the people would say, well, why weren't they talking about it? But let me ask you, do you talk about everything you do as a person? 
you don't. And people won't because people probably think, well, you know, maybe they're unsure or maybe they don't want it. Or maybe they fear that if they talk about it, people will just, you know, kind of write them off and say that, oh, this is haram or this is this and this is that. And maybe people will use it. You know, this is why this book was really good to revelatory to read The Joy of Pain, because it showed, and I said in my discussion that I found it quite relieving to read that because it showed that we as human beings deep down have an urge to hate on people. But we recognize socially that hating on people is a bad thing. So when we're given an excuse, we will take that excuse all the way. So if we have a reason, so he gives examples like, let's say, he says, um, he uses things like a, a term, which he borrows from someone, humilitainment, like humiliation, entertainment, humilitainment. And he says shows like American Idol or shows like How to Catch a Predator. And he says that why do people go over and beyond in these shows? He says, well, because they like he says, well, how to catch a predator is a prime example because all cultures hate pedophiles. So this is an absolute green light to really go all out. Uh, and your hate is totally um, kind of venerated and justified. And even American Idol, as an example, or Britain's Got Talent, the reason you're justified is because people will say to themselves, well, you know, well, such and such person knew they couldn't sing. So they made a fool out of themselves. Why would you audition if you don't know it? You know, when you know you, you're incapable. So it gives them an excuse to go all out. And he cites a lot of studies like Tiger Woods and great people when they, um, you know, when they mess up and scandals or other things when people have uh, serious accidents or when people, why do people, because deep down they have this urge to hate. So... I wouldn't be so sure that people didn't follow a particular path, although only a few openly spoke about it. So that's, um, yeah. Shroomed out go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good book, actually. It's uh, I normally just had it here somewhere, but I must have moved it and put it back in the library. But so, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 interesting to see the, just animals getting all stoned out. But it's not stoned. To be honest, I don't like that word because it doesn't describe psychedelics. It's more about certain substance abuse. Psychedelics is more about being on a altering a state of consciousness. Right, let's take...